Hi, my name is Marion Thuo, a pastor and a marriage and family therapist. Today we want to talk about family mental health during COVID-19. Are you at home? Are you with family? Whether you're at home and with family or not, is that family is the most important group of people in your life. Healthy families learn how to live with one another, to support one another through good times and difficult times. No family is perfect. Families have strengths and they have weaknesses. God loves families. From the book of Genesis, God begins by forming a family with Adam and Eve. And he uses that family to propagate his mission on earth. Jesus was born in a family. So family is very, very important. In fact, the Bible is full of stories of families and how they lived their lives in obedience to God or in disobedience to God. Now, mental health is a very common conversation that people are talking about today. What is mental health? It's our state of physical, mental, and social well-being. So our lives at this particular time have many challenges. They have social challenges, they are financial challenges that could force our bodies or make our bodies to be less healthy, to feel weak and tired and depressed and sad and unable to think straight, unable to concentrate, unable to sleep, unable to eat, and of course with the social distancing, unable to socialize. These challenges are a threat to our mental health, individually and as a family. COVID-19 is a big, big challenge to the family's mental health. There is a lot of distress in the family that could be because of three types of challenges or three types of conflicts. One is pre-COVID, pre-existing COVID, pre COVID uh, conflicts, conflicts that existed before COVID-19 was there. For example, unresolved fights between couples, challenges about parenting an adolescent. Those are pre-existing conflicts that have been there before COVID was there, where the relationship was strained and the conflicts were continuing. Even financial struggles that families could have been having before COVID-19. Then secondly, we have a second challenge, a second conflict, the confinement conflict. Conflict that has been brought about in the family because we are confined in the same space due to the lockdown, due to curfews. We are in the same space with the same people. We happen to find personality conflicts, raw conflicts, expectation conflict. I want to sleep. You want to read. I want to dance and scream. You want to be quiet. And we are in the same space. They test our quality of friendship our quality of endurance, our ability to negotiate with one another. How do we coexist with one another with the hope of being harmonious and even working out our conflict? Personality clashes are mixed with unmet expectations and iced with our own personal frustrations and anxieties, resulting to a possibility of mental problems. And the third thing is the compounded conflict of the effects of COVID-19 on a global and even on a national level. We are all afraid of contracting COVID-19. We are practicing social distancing, but we need to go and look for food. We are experiencing economical difficulties. Some of us are already experiencing pay cuts, loss of jobs, lack of food, inability to make ends meet. And therefore, we look at one another and our frustrations continue to bring about conflict in the family. And then we are confined in the same space. We've not resolved those issues, but we have new issues coming up. Why aren't you helping me with house chores? Who is going to take the children through their lesson today? And many of us are unwilling, or both of us, are unwilling to share roles. We are unwilling to treat one another as a teammate. And all this is compounded by the fact that we have to work from home. We have lost our jobs. We need to cut down our costs of living. We need to move maybe somewhere else. 
We have limited social gatherings. We cannot go to tell our friends what is happening. If we take a call, she will hear, he will hear what I'm going to say on the other side. Therefore, we find code language to talk to other people so that we are able to relieve ourselves. The result of that, stress, frustration, anxiety, depression, domestic violence, verbal abuse, physical abuse, financial abuse, and all this is a risk to our mental health. Now, there are three levels of addressing our mental health as a family. One is my personal self-care. Each individual in the family needs to understand themselves, know what they are going through, understand their distress about work, frustration of not being in school as a young person, frustration of not being able to go and meet with your friends, deal with your personal frustration, losses and disappointment, monitor your own behavior, your emotions, your thoughts, watch out for anything negative and any self-harming behavior that you could be picking up. Seek for help from your family, from your spiritual leaders and professional counseling. The first level of care is self. The second level of care is couple care. Couples, relationship conflicts do not resolve themselves. You need to work on them. You need to engage in some negotiation. You need to create a conducive environment to work through your conflicts for the health of the whole family. Number three is child care. This talks about parenting behavior. Parents will need to understand each child's individual personality, their age and their developmental tasks. What do they need? The adolescents need freedom with responsibility. The child needs direction and support. And the young adult needs compassion and consultation. Be intentional, be involved, be fair as a parent. Help your children to have a routine and to practice it. And finally, what is the resource for the whole family in being able to be mentally healthy during this season? We are all using SOAP. So I'm going to use the acronym SOAPS. S stands for support one another. Your family is not your rival. Make positive and fair adjustment for each other. Decide to support everyone and remain healthy, whether you agree with them or not. O stands for open communication. Keep communication channels open. Openly talk about your frustrations. Openly talk about your expectations, even to be helped in the house. A stands for agree with one another. Focus on reducing your conflicts by agreeing and reducing your frustrations that causes you to be more hurt and distant from one another. Develop a friendship and maintain that friendship as family members. Have fun and find joy in being with each other. P participate. Do not be an observer in the family. Participate in reconnecting with each family member daily, weekly, through daily routines like working together, eating together, praying together, playing together, cooking together. Find an activity that you enjoy as family to do together and that will change your attitude towards one another. And finally, S, seek help. Remember, not all of us will be able to deal with our emotional, psychological, and spiritual distress well on our own. We need to ask for help. Help seeking is not a sign of weakness, but a sign of strength. That we know when our resources have been depleted, we can reach out to the community out there to provide us with resources of counseling and support from our spiritual leaders and also from professional counselors. Let's seek help as individuals. Let's seek help as families. Let's seek help as couples so that we can be healthy. Do not be ashamed in doing so. You're doing yourself good. No man is an island. Therefore, the family is the best place at this moment to be.
so that we can be able to say, east to west, home is best. Home can only be best if we create a healthy environment for everybody to be able to stay there. Enjoy your family times as you learn to live with one another in a loving and a healthy way. Thank you.